Hi, my name is Walt Furchman, Product Manager for the new EDAC XR. In this short presentation, I want to introduce you to the software that runs on the EDAC XR and help you get a little more familiar with the workflow and some of the terminology. The first thing I want to point out is that there's no software that you need to install on your PC. The EDAC XR is a web server. So you just need a browser, you type in the IP address, and the software will load from the unit. Some of the main areas, um, on the top left, we have different views. We have a system view, a setup view, and a control view. And we'll drill into these a little bit more in, in, in a moment. Um, right below that, you have a menu panel these menus uh, options will change depending on which view you select. And to the right of those is uh, what we refer to as the workspace. And the workspace also changes depending on which menu panel, uh, menu option you select. Below the menu panel is an action panel. So again, if you're in the workspace, you select something or you want to do an operation, um, the action panel is where you would do that. Um, and if it's grayed out, that just means you can't do that. Um, and if it's highlighted in color or blue, then you can do that operation. On the top right, we have quick links. This might be uh, where you will, you know, a quick way to save the file, change your personal preferences, change the language you want to, the software to uh, run in. Uh, search for things in your setup file and then a help system as well and on the very bottom is a status bar things like cpu load how much storage is left on your unit to store data um, the led light status and even a little paper clip there you can look at a log file which has a history of your your tests So let's take a quick look at some of these uh, um, different views, starting with the system view. So when you select a system view, you have things in the menu panel there right below, uh, like uh, setting up users and profiles. This might be if you have a technician, you want to um, only allow them to do certain things. You can set that up. You can, uh, the next one down is a database. So databases uh, could be a CAN database. We now support DBC files directly, but also our uh, previous text file that was used on the EDAC. Uh, this might also be where you want to upload a uh, sensor database, which we'll be supporting as well. Below that, it's network more for setting up uh, um, multiple uh, Define static IP settings rather than DHCP, which uh, the unit does support. Then you have mail server and FTP servers. Um, the unit can email you, and you can also set up a way that it can autom automatically upload the data to an FTP server. Uh, then date and time, firmware. Um, certain system preferences and customer support. Each one of these, when you select a different menu option, the workspace changes and um, uh, also the action panel will have different options. This is just to give you a workflow, this presentation. Uh, in other videos that are coming, we'll actually drill into each one of these and go into more detail. The next view is setup. Uh, this is where you're going to spend most of your time setting up your tests. So system is more system related. The setup here is more for, for uh, test configuration setup. So um, different views, hardware, and uh, that will give you more of a visualization of what hardware you have. Uh, input channels, that will give you a as you can kind of see on this screen, uh, almost a spreadsheet view of all your channels and the parameters uh, and um, across the right, uh, different options. Computed channels, if you've used an EDAC, you're familiar with computed channels and data modes, which is also there on that menu panel. 
and then output channels would be digital uh, outputs. You can see the the box in the middle called sensors. This is where you could have a sensor database or a, there's a user defined sensor database that you can drag and drop those onto the hardware or add channels from those sensor databases. You can also see on your setup on the top the test setup name that you've selected. Um, so the workflow here will be setting up your system first, setup, your test configuration, defining all your channels, um, data modes, whatever. And by the way, you can see on this screen the, the tab in the spreadsheet view called collect. We automatically collect all the channels that are defined. So you no longer have to set up a data mode if you don't want. All the channels will be collected into a time history, but you can unselect those or unselect all of them. The last view is the control view. This is where you will uh, start and stop your test, where you will set up your real-time displays. Uh, in this example, we've got a couple strip charts set up. The bottom right is actually a, a live FFT. Um, you have alarm settings. Uh, you can see the red boxes and the yellow boxes on the digital readouts on the bottom left display. So a lot of options there. So you'll start your test. You can define multiple tabs um, for multiple different uh, uh, views or channel configurations that you want to look at. And I should also mention that multiple people can look at these at the same time. So if you had this connected to a wireless router, um, or switch, the one user, one engineer could be looking at these channels that you see on the screen and another engineer could be looking at tab number two or three or four or whatever they want to look at and look at a totally total different uh, group of channels. And then when you stop the test you can upload the data, uh, you can see the file name there, um, it will automatically, uh, you can launch it into whatever analysis tool because it is being stored in SIE, so same as your EDAC. Uh, it can automatically launch, whether it's Glyphworks or Infield or whatever tool you use to uh, visualize your data or analyze your data. So everything I just said about the software that runs on the EDAC XR, we also have an emulator that um, you don't need to have hardware to do this. So you can configure a test offline using the emulator and then create the, what we're calling an SXR file, SOMAT XR file, and uh, then you can load it into real hardware and run your test. So as I said, this is just a real quick overview of the software. We'll have more videos drilling into details on uh, different aspects of the software. So stay tuned, but don't hesitate to give me a call or shoot me an email if you have any specific questions that I can help out with. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.